A very warm welcome to the news in details. Now, the President of the Republic of Rwanda, His Excellency Paul Kagame, on Thursday met and held talks with Alice Wery Munderitu, the Special Advisor of the UN Secretary General on the Prevention of Genocide. Alice Wery Munderitu has been in Rwanda since the end of last month as she held talks with leaders at various levels, including the National Commission Against Genocide, discussing matters concerning fighting genocide and its ideology, fighting those who deny it, and looking at how institutions can continue to work together to build unity and reconciliation. Now, moving on, and authorities say uh, the fact that some activities have been resumed and working hours extended should be the reason people become complacent and deviant from the COVID-19 preventive measures in place and those who do will be punished. Innocent Mugabo has more the details. In Kigali City, movement is prohibited from 10 p.m. to 4 a.m. with business closing at 9 p.m. In Nyabogogo, movement is as usual. The same is the case in different commercial areas like markets. All the people here are happy to see that working hours have been extended as it removes the challenges they used to face. Before we used to find all the tickets from here to Nyaruguru sold out. But now that 3 p.m. taxis can be phoned, we are very glad. Those who wanted tickets to travel to Rusizi slept here in the park since they used to find them sold out. But now that 2 p.m. taxis are also going to be available, we are very happy. We are happy that they extended the curfew. Our stock used to rot due to lack of customers, but now I believe this is going to change. The latest cabinet meeting has also addressed several issues, of which include concerts, festivals and exhibition, among others, noting that these will be reopening in phases and to only those who got vaccinated against COVID-19, not forgetting to be tested first. The youth have welcomed the decision. People have been living in misery, but now we are all set for the next step since most of us are vaccinated. We shall attend the concerts to get rid of the distress. <laughs> Alex Muyoboche, a well-known event organizer, says that this is an opportunity that artists have gotten and shouldn't waste. Usually it is the artists that closely followed up on the resolutions of all the cabinet meetings. We are glad and I continue to urge artists to follow the pandemic preventive measures and ensure to get vaccinated for everything to go well. For sure, artists were living a miserable life. For the past two years, they have spent without making concerts. The Minister of Local Government, Gataba Zijam Mariviane, says that the preventive measures must continue to be respected and those caught not doing so will be punished. All the resumed activities... Their owners should try to be responsible in enforcing the COVID-19 preventive measures to protect the lives of those that come to their service, not to wait for the government to interfere. Those with wedding events should always ensure to have youth volunteers to help out, because if we come for inspection and find that all this isn't being respected, the venue will be closed and the event owner will be punished. <laughs> In Kigali City, curfew is from 10 p.m. to 4 a.m., with business closing at 9 p.m., while elsewhere across the country, curfew is from 9 p.m. to 4 a.m., with business closing at 8 p.m. However, in Burera, Jichumbi, Chirehe, Ngoma, Nyagatare, Nyamasheche, Nyaruguru, and Ramagana districts where COVID-19 infection rates are highest, curfew is from 8 p.m. to 4 a.m. Here, business will be closing at 7 p.m. Innocent Mugabo. RTV News. As the infection rate of COVID-19 continues to rise in Yagatare district, the district administration says that one of the reasons for the increase in the number of cases is non-compliance with the guidelines set to fight against the spread of COVID-19 virus and mistaking symptoms for other diseases and delaying to seek medical assistance, resulting in a rise in critical cases in hospitals now. COVID-19 infections in the district are currently at a rate of 17.8%. Marijad reports. 
In some parts of Nyagatare district, especially in the commercial centers of some of the rural sectors, there are a significant number of residents that do not comply with the guidelines set to fight against COVID-19, including properly wearing face masks. In the centers, you will find hand washing stations that look to be abandoned and unused. Those who remember to wash their hands when they come to seek services are few. This is one of the reasons why local residents of the district confirm that the number of people infected with the virus is increasing. There are times when people forget to follow the guidelines. Someone will come and chase us to remind us to put on face masks, as well as follow the other guidelines. But people do not give it any importance. They're doing what they feel like. There is a need for people to wake up because if they remove the lockdown, some people may feel like COVID-19 no longer exists. According to the daily statistics released by the Ministry of Health, the number of people living with COVID-19 in Yagatari district is estimated to have reached 904 people this August. According to the Nyagatare Hospital Administration, Nyagatare sector is at the forefront of having the highest number of patients, followed by Rukomo, Mimuli, and Karangazi sectors. Nyagatare district's deputy mayor for social affairs said that one of the reasons for the increase in the number of people infected with COVID-19 was the fact that some people were hiding that they were positive for COVID-19 and not following the instructions to stay at home. There were also people that confused the virus for other diseases. One thing we can see in the villages is that people are getting infected with COVID-19 but confusing it for other illnesses. That is one of the problems we found. One may come to the doctor with shortness of breath and that's when they'll get tested. He or she will attest to the fact that they thought they only had flu and that was what caused the shortness of breath. A person will also go on to say they thought it was a different illness or even malaria. This is always based on a feeling without testing. We are continuing to spread the reminder that all residents should be cautious and take advantage of the clinics near them for testing so they may know where they stand. COVID-19 infections in Yagatari district are currently at a rate of 17.8%. This led to the decisions of the cabinet meeting held on September 1, 2021. Special hours were set for Nyagatare, Burera, Jichumbi, Ngoma, Chirehe, Gwamagana, Nyaruguru, Nyamasheche for residents to reach their homes because they showed higher numbers of COVID-19 infections. According to the Minister of Local Government, the districts should already be under a total lockdown but they are being given the final opportunity to turn things around. The district of Nyagatare has an infection rate of 17.8%, while Jichumbi is at 17.1%, as well as these other districts, which have respectively 11%, 10%, 7.8%, 7.2%, and all these figures were recently confirmed. But there are other localities where the infection rate has been observed to change, such as Kigali City with 0.8%. Early curfew hours have been enforced as a way of allowing people to work otherwise. There would be in a total lockdown. Meanwhile, the COVID-19 vaccination campaign in Nyagatari district and across the country has continued. But the Ministry of Health says the districts with higher numbers of infected COVID-19 residents will be prioritized. The ministry also said there is confidence that 2021 will end with 30% of Rwandans vaccinated and an expected 60% of Rwandans will be vaccinated by 2021. Umgari Jade, RTV News. Thank you, Jed, for that report. Now, the Ministry of Trade and Industry is confident that the She Trades program will significantly benefit female entrepreneurs, as there are also financial institutions that have agreed to provide them with money to invest in their businesses. Murekatete Joy, who has been growing flowers for five years, sells them in Rwanda and abroad and does decorating services in various places. 
She explains that women are making great strides in the business world, but mostly that the lack of advancement at the same level as men is due to the fact that women are less likely to get opportunities due to the location of where they live or the nature of what they do. Some women in business don't get opportunities like grants because they don't have what is required or due to their location, yet these women have a vision that they want to achieve. For example, you find that they are asked to first present some documents that show that they pay their employees, yet those whom they hired don't have bank accounts. Due to the challenges faced by women in business and investment, about 98% of women are in the informal sector, 33% are women who run business enterprises, while 1% is women in large business. The She Trades program, which was launched today on Tuesday, is aimed at training women who need mentoring in business through various business training courses. Once they apply, the representative of women in business in the private sector, Mobili Dijon Francoise, says that women shall benefit from this program. This will help women in business to get on board or to be on a platform with the rest of other business women in various businesses and trading various products among each other. This will be a game changer for every woman in this program, which is exactly what we are aiming for, that every woman gets these opportunities. Another thing, many women are doing micro or small businesses and we want them to elevate and start doing formal businesses. The Minister for Trade and Industry, Beata Habjarimana, assures women in business that as they join this program, they shall be assisted in terms of trainings, infrastructure and more. She says that the fact that there are many women who lack investment or collateral, some financial institutions have already agreed to work with them. So far they have two financial institutions, as they have already signed an agreement with one of them. Both of them will be working with members of the She Trades program. They are also going to work with the Guarantee Fund, which will be helping those that don't have collateral to get it. The launch of the She Treads program took place virtually. In Rwanda, between 100,000 and 200,000 women are traders, accounting for 30% of all traders in the country. Now, the International Organization for Peace Building Interpeace carried out research in Wujesira district and found that 44% of genocide survivors over 45 years and older are suffering from problems related to trauma. District authorities say they are going to work to assist those among them with such problems that are unable to see professional help. The research also found depression among the children of genocide survivors, despite them being born after the end of the genocide against the Tutsi here in Rwanda. The latest figures from the National Unity and Reconciliation Commission indicate that Wujesira comes second in the entire country among districts when it comes to unity and reconciliation with 97%. The EU ambassador has commended the progress Rwanda made in this respect over the years. What happened in 1994, it's something that of course will take time, it takes time in any society. So I'm already extremely uh, uh, um, you know, uh, impressed by the progress that the country made over the last 27 years. And uh, this uh, result, this uh, research and uh, this baseline study shows that you know, the government and the people of Rwanda. Now, the research carried out in October last year also found that 44% of genocide survivors over the age of 45 are women and that 29% of genocide survivors in the district between the ages of 28 and 44 are the most affected by trauma and other depression-related problems. The research also found that 33% of genocide perpetrators locked up for their crimes and 22% that were released after serving their time suffer from depression. On Thursday, peace builders conclude a training on peace education so that they can better teach others on how to promote peace in general. Participants of the training noted on the importance of what they had been taught, saying they will now be able to pass on the information in important sectors like education. I learned how we can help each other as teachers, how we can identify troubled children, 
and find out what they are struggling with so that they can be assisted. We also learned how to use games to promote harmony among the kids. The training helped us to prepare a program that will be used in the education sector and broader society. We will use it as the pillar we need to enable ourselves to train others. Officials at the Rwanda Basic Education Board have endorsed their approach, noting that conflict is not caused by just one thing. I cannot say that conflict is derived from just one thing, which is why training is required to ascertain all of its sources so that people can sit and decide on how to proceed promoting a culture of peace building among students and the general public. The organizers of the training say they felt it important to train people on peace building. When we prepared the training, it was after people had been discussing the problem of violence, intimidation and other problems you are aware of in this Great Lakes region. Therefore, providing training on peace building is a way of showing people that there are other ways of dealing with problems, not necessarily resorting to violence and intimidation towards others. The trainees have committed to using what they were taught to spread principles of peace and harmony through things like dialogue. Now, following the announcement of its partnership with the Rwanda Inspiration Backup um, Organization and Miss Rwanda 2021 in Garide Grace, Africa Improved Foods has launched a project to support community health workers in collaboration with the aforementioned organization. Now, as a way of recognizing and supporting the efforts of health workers, AIF has developed a project that will empower them through income generating activities. Now, without in, with that in mind, AIF, in partnership with Rwanda Inspiration Backup, donated six pigs to three cooperatives of community health workers in Guamagana district with a solid distribution plan that will ensure all 1,900 community health workers grouped in 15 cooperatives in the area to benefit from this project. Drugs, food and follow-up shall also be given to ensure a successful project. Pig farming in Rwanda has been growing progressively, with the number of pigs increasing by 76% in the last five years to over 1.7 million.